Good evening once again and welcome to the evening liturgy of evening prayer or Vespers in the Latin. We come on this uh, first Wednesday in Advent. So we're starting with an Advent hymn, uh, which isn't in the breviary, unfortunately, um, but it's on the Universalis and it's fairly well known. We come at the beginning of another church year with preparation in mind. Preparation for the coming. As Advent just means the coming, the appearing, the happening. What is coming? But in the early part of Advent, we concentrate on the second coming of our Lord. The something which is something we've got to be prepared for at any moment. Are we prepared? And of course, usually we aren't, unless we've just come out of the confessional. But um, that's not where I've been today unfortunately, although I need to go. We do assemble at this time of day, now pitch black outside, and as usual, the roads around here are gridlocked, so hopefully I don't get a call from the hospital because you can't go very far, very fast at uh, this time of night in Guildford. Hopefully they won't call at this time. We come to offer prayer and praise to our Heavenly Father. We offer also the prayers that you have sent in and asked us to offer on your behalf and light a candle for each one. And those little candles burn for at least two hours after we've lit them. So that symbolizes your prayer still burning, still going up, God still listening to that prayer. It's a service where many people do send in requests and it's very gratifying that they do. Um, there's a lot of prayer um, generated by the live stream, which is a useful thing. The divine office, the breviary, it's very often, as I've said in the past, it's meant to be a communal office, but circumstances make such, with secular priests, we're very much on our own saying the offices. And it's nice to be able to be joined by you on the live stream. I'm alone in this church, but I know there are many, many of you watching and connected tonight and praying for us and praying for those people who've asked for our prayers. And it's gratifying to know that so many of those prayers are answered, answered in the, the way that they've wanted them answered. Many others are answered in a different way, perhaps not obvious at the time. But the thing is to be persistent in prayer, as the Lord told in his parable of the, uh, the woman who harangued the judge until she got justice. And Paul tells us, St. Paul says, pray continuously. That means throughout the day in conversational mode, if you like, not necessarily in formal mode. We need to strengthen that, that channel of prayer. And don't forget it's a two-way conversation. It's not just us asking. It's us thanking, but it's also us listening. Listening to that still, small voice that sometimes comes back. Sometimes comes back while we're in prayer. Sometimes comes back through other people talking to us. The Lord makes his wishes known in various ways. We have to be careful in listening and discerning in what is being said to us. At the end of Vespers, we will end with the evening anthem to our Blessed Lady. And being Advent, it'll be the Arma Redemptoris, Martyr. The, because this will now be... Um, sung after Compline normally, but we do it after evening prayer here. From now until February the 2nd, which was the end of the old Christmas period. I must admit, I can't sing that very well and very truly. Okay with plenty of others singing along with me, but to sing a solo is a little bit demanding. I'm going to read it this evening. And I'm going to read it in English, as some of you prefer all the prayers in English. That's not to say I will be ditching the Latin. Um, Latin is a beautiful language and it's the, the language of heaven as many people have described it. It's a very formal language but very beautiful. But we will be making that prayer to our Blessed Lady to pray for us, for us, to her Son, our Blessed Lord Jesus. So we start as usual with the Angelus, the Angel Gabriel's announcement of the coming at that time of the salvation of the world, God made flesh. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, 
and she conceived by the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it done unto me according to thy word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the word was made flesh, and dwelt amongst us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ thy Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glories of his resurrection. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, come to our aid. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Alleluia. On Jordan's bank the Baptist cry announces that the Lord is nigh. Come then and hearken, for he brings glad tidings from the King of kings. Then cleanse be every Christian breast and furnished for so great a guest. Yea, let us each his heart prepare for Christ to come and enter there. For thou art our salvation, Lord, our refuge and our great reward. Without thy grace our souls must fade and with a like a flower decayed. Stretch forth thine hand to heal us sore, and make us rise to fall no more. Once more upon thy people shine, and fill the world with love divine. All praise, eternal Son, to thee, whose advent sets thy people free, whom with the Father we adore, and Holy Ghost forevermore. The Lord is my light and my help, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Before whom shall I shrink? When evil doers draw near to devour my flesh, it is they, my enemies and foes, who stumble and fall. Though an army encamp against me, my heart would not fear. Though war break out against me, even then would I trust. There is one thing I ask of the Lord, for this I long, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to savour the sweetness of the Lord, to behold his holy temple. For there he keeps me safe in his tent, in the day of evil. He hides me in the shelter of his tent, on a rock he sets me safe. And now my head shall be raised above my foes who surround me and I shall offer within his tent a sacrifice of joy. I will sing and make music for the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. 
The Lord is my light and my help. Whom shall I fear? It is your face, O Lord, that I seek. Hide not your face. O Lord, hear my voice when I call. Have mercy and answer. Of you my heart has spoken. Seek his face. It is your face, O Lord, that I seek. Hide not your face. Dismiss not your servant in anger. You have been my help. Do not abandon or forsake me. O God, my help. Though father and mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. Instruct me, Lord, in your way. On an even path lead me. When they lie in ambush, protect me from my enemy's greed. False witnesses rise against me, breathing out fury. I am sure I shall see the Lord's goodness in the land of the living. Hope in him, hold firm and take heart. Hope in the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. It is your face, O Lord, that I seek. Hide not your face. He is the firstborn of all creation. He is supreme over all creatures. Let us give thanks to the Father who has qualified us to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. He has delivered us from the dominion of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. All things were created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. For in him the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. He is the firstborn of all creatures. He is supreme over all creatures. A reading from the first letter to the Corinthians. There must be no passing of premature judgment. Leave that until the Lord comes. He will light up all that is hidden in the dark and reveal the secret intentions of men's hearts. Then will be the time for each one to have whatever praise he deserves from God. Come to us and save us, Lord God Almighty. We repeat, come to us and save us, Lord God Almighty. Let your face smile on us and we shall be safe. Come to us and save us, Lord God Almighty. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Come to us and save us, Lord God Almighty. The law will go forth from Zion and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. My soul glorifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He looks on his servant in her lowliness. Henceforth all ages will call me blessed. The Almighty works marvels for me. Holy his name. 
His mercy is from age to age on those who fear him. He puts forth his arm in strength and scatters the proud hearted. He casts the mighty from their thrones and raises the lowly. He fills the starving with good things, sends the rich away empty. He protects Israel, his servant, remembering his mercy, the mercy promised to our fathers, to Abraham and his sons forever. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The law will go forth from Zion and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Let us pray to God, the Father, who is Lord and ruler of all. Come and visit your people. Come as the shepherd to tend your flock. Gather all people into the unity of the church. Come and visit your people. Lord, remember all the sons of Abraham, all who await your promise in faith. Come and visit your people. We pray for those who seek to escape from life. Lord, give them hope to live by and courage to persevere. Come and visit your people. Remember those who have died. Show them the glory of your Son has gained for them. Come and visit your people. And now offer the prayers that you've asked us to offer on your behalf that you've sent in to the parish office by email, by telephone. The prayer request from Joslyn to pray for healing for Jesse. A prayer request from Margaret in the United States, I would like to ask for God's blessing on our priests and deacons who care for us with love, reverence, and such humanness with open hearts of care. It comes across the live stream and is felt by all of us. A prayer request from Ingrid. Would you please light the candle and say a prayer for Carol Pickett? who is starting chemotherapy today. Joe sends in a request for the intentions of the Smythe and Harrington families. And we offer a prayer for all families who are awaiting baptisms patiently at this time. May they continue to be patient as we do our best to increase the number of baptisms we can manage each week. And we also pray for the discussions taking place in our parish and deanery and throughout the diocese on the synod questions, that they may bear fruit. And we pray for the staff and pupils of St. Joseph's Catholic School in our parish who will be celebrating Mass with Monsignor Tony tomorrow, that their faith may be strengthened in our Lord Jesus. And a prayer request of my own that I'm making for a couple I am preparing for their wedding next July. The bridegroom, Ross, has suddenly died in his sleep. I ask you to pray for his soul and for his fiancée, Annetta, that she be comforted at this terribly painful time for her and each of their families. And 
and a request to please pray for my husband, Patrick Aldridge, whose 13th anniversary is today. May he rest in peace. Amen. And a prayer for all the holy souls, and particularly our own loved ones gone before us, that the Lord God be merciful to them and grant them eternal rest. Let us join in that prayer that our Saviour himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Prepare our hearts, Lord, by the power of your grace. When Christ comes, may he find us worthy to receive from his hand the bread of heaven at the feast of eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we conclude with the evening anthem to our Blessed Lady. Sweet Mother of the Redeemer, the passage to the heavens, the gate of the spirits of the dead and the star of the sea, aid the falling. Mother of him who cares for the people, you who brought forth the wonder of nature, your creator, virgin before and after, who received of Gabriel with joyful greeting, have pity on us, sinners. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Amen.